Yo peeps, Mischief here. Welcome to the Conspiracy Cupboard. Today, we are going to be doing the What's the Deal with George Knapp. Cue title sequence. Oh, oh, okay. So I know it's been a week or two since I did the What's the Deal with Jeremy Corbell. Well, here we go. Let's uh, let's look into George Knapp then. So George T. Knapp, it's like James Tiberius Kirk. I wonder what the T stands for. It doesn't tell me. Uh, George T. Knapp was born on April 18th, 1953, making him 69 now <laughs> in Woodbury, New Jersey, United States. He grew up in Northern California and graduated from Franklin High School in Stockton, where he was senior class president. Knapp earned a bachelor degree in communication from the University of West Georgia and a master's degree in the same field of the University of Pacific. He taught debate and forensics both at the University of Pacific and the University of California in Berkeley. He moved to Las Vegas in the early 80s, <coughs> working as a early 80s. What was that about? <laughs> I suddenly went really northern then. He moved to Las Vegas in early 80s, working first as a cab driver before being hired as an intern and then as a news reporter by PBS station. From there, Knapp was hired as a reporter and anchor for KLS, <laughs> which is the uh, news, <laughs> which is the uh, main news uh, coverage in Las Vegas. And they've covered some big stories. George has covered some massive stories over the years. Uh, corruption cases, you know, things down to mayors, uh, you know, uh, mob stories, all sorts of stuff, not just UFO stuff. So this is why I uh, believe George more uh, when he when he backs somebody, because he's got a lot on the line. You know, he's made his entire career from doing this. This is where he's made all his money from. Yeah, he's, he's wrote books, he's, he's sold stuff, you know, he's, he's uh, an anchor, you know, he works for these big news organisations as well. So they're not going to have him on if he's just a crazy kook. I mean, if you read anything about him, he'll come up with conspiracy theorists. I suppose he is a kind of conspiracy theorist, but it's not really him with the conspiracies. He's just interviewing people that have these you know, ideas. Uh, George Knapp famously reported on the story of Bob Lazar, who claimed to have worked on extraterrestrial UFOs at the secretive Area S4 in Area 51. According to Knapp, his discovery of evidence collaborating some of Lazar's claims made his stories on Lazar be taken a lot more seriously than the typical UFO fair. Knapp's stories on Lazar earned an Individual Achievement of Journalism Award in the United Press International in 1990. However, to Knapp's eternal shame, also during this era, he publicised the claims of conspiracy theorist Bill Cooper, who uh, did the Behold the Pale Horse book, and I'll, I'll get into uh, told Milton William Cooper, Bill Cooper, a little bit later. Uh, who Knapp obviously became to be guess as far less credible than Lazar. He also did interviews with John Lear, um, who broke the secret sort of areas they were working on. He's the one that told us about these different uh, alien beings or possible other creatures that the Air Force apparently teach their pilots and things about in briefing documents. There'll also be a, a video coming on what's the deal with John Lear as well. Uh, so in 1991 then, Knapp left KLS to work for Altamira Communications, a public relations firm whose clients included advocates of the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository, 90 miles north of Las Vegas. Knapp was rehired by KLS in the mid-90s when he left the public relations firm. He wrote a regular column titled Napster for the now defunct alternative news likes Las Vegas Mercury and Las Vegas City Life. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Knapp worked with the now defunct group National Institute of Discovery Science, or NIDS, which was founded by Las Vegas businessman Robert Bigelow. I'll be doing a What's the Deal with Robert Bigelow as well, um, because, interjected very slightly, Robert Bigelow is the reason that we have ORSAP. Okay, uh, Senator Harry Reid pushed it forward. Um, ATIP is ORSAP. Okay, it's not a separate thing. It's the same, unless you're looking at the ATIP that Lou Elizondo ran, which has nothing to do with either of them, and it was a separate program that he did. It wasn't even a real program. It didn't have any funding. 
All SAP had £22 million worth of funding. It was all for Skinwalker Ranch, all to investigate ghosts, werewolves, goblins and ghouls, which they didn't tell the US Congress at the time because they knew the Congress would go mad mental because you're, you're spending £22 million, you know, looking into werewolves and ghosts and things uh, and UFOs, but mainly over this place, Skinwalker Ranch, which George did a book on. Uh, Nids then was charged with scientifically studying unusual phenomena with scientists and funding, like I said, from the government mainly, and backed a lot by Robert Bigelow, who is a millionaire, well, billionaire, I believe Bigelow is. So based on his work with Nids and biochemist Colm Kellier, Knapp publicised the so-called Skinwalker Ranch, as I've mentioned, in northeastern Utah. I will be doing a video on Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there about Skinwalker Ranch, so before I've done this video, if you want to go and check out some videos on YouTube about Skinwalker Ranch, if you've never heard of it, uh, there's some really good ones on there. Uh, and this is where many strange events are alleged to have occurred. Uh, like I said, werewolves, aliens, ghosts, you name it, apparently they're there. Although, not sure what I believe on that subject, but George, you know, from what he said, he's said that Skinwalker Ranch is a fucking weird place. Um, I don't know if he's ever seen anything himself, but obviously he's just gone on to reports of Robert Bigelow and etc. So in 2004, then, Knapp won a National Edward R. Munro Award for the story about vote fraud in Clark County, Nevada. He also won dozens of Pacific Southwest Regional Emmy Awards and several writing awards from the Associated Press. So like I say, George is a credible journalist. You know, he doesn't just stick something out there and put his name to it if he doesn't think it's got some kind of credibility to it. Like I say, he did back Bob Cooper a little bit, or well, he got him on, but when he realised how fucking crazy Bob Cooper is, he went, um, yeah, sorry, Bob. <laughs> you know, you, you said the aliens shot your hand off and they travel through the Earth's... Yeah, sorry, I, I'm going to have to, say, like, stop there, you know. Uh, I mean, nothing that Bob Lazar has claimed is that radical, really, when you actually think about the whole thing. Yeah, I know my hair makes me look like Emmett Brown from fucking Back to the Future. <laughs> But we're just going to deal with this. Okay, we're going to deal with this. So, uh, George Knapp and photojournalist Matt Adams were recognised for their work on the investigative series Crossfire, Water, Power and Politics, which received a 2008 Peabody Award. Knapp has also been concerned with animal welfare since the beginning of his journalistic career. Since hosting occasionally Coast to Coast AM, he hosts an annual animal welfare broadcast concerning issues, the developmental law of animal, animal cruelty and redemption efforts. In 2016, broadcast covered various issues, including horses, trophy hunting, noting almost one year anniversary since the killing of Cecil the lion and the effect the incident was still causing at the date of the show. Um, so, uh, George married uh, Anne the Viking Frenchie. They had their wedding in 2010 and the couple held their mar marriage ceremony at Kalu How Kuai, Hawaii. I probably said that wrong. Let's have a look at uh, how much George is worth then, shall we? So, George's net worth is meant to be estimated to be around $5 million. His main source of income from this, uh, from his career, is basically his television career and his investigative journalist stuff, um, news anchor, talk radios and books that he's released. Uh, so George continues to be a major influencer in journalism in America and in Las Vegas. And obviously he's now doing the podcast uh, hosted with Jeremy Corbell, Weaponized. So the reason I want to do these videos, like I said before, is to get a bit of background information on the people that we're looking at, on the people that we're sort of believing and trusting. Now, like I said, uh, Jeremy's uh, what's the deal with wasn't very long. Uh, the backstory to George isn't that long, but you can go and look in. So he's done on the record where he interviewed John Lear first. These were 1980 seven interviews i believe um they're fascinating uh, it's where john lear basically tells him you know we're, we're investigating ufos we're doing this we're, we're we've got reports from pilots and things but i've got a document here that tells you different classifications of aliens and etc now george didn't just buy straight into all this but this is what led into him discovering bob lazar 
through John Lear and all these people, Bob obviously approached him to get the story out about S4 mainly. Let's not confuse the, the, the thing here. He was describing Area S4 at Area 51 in the Nevada test range. Yeah. Um, so if George is backing Bob, then this is what makes Bob's story more credible. Bob's been the one that's, uh, sorry, George has been the one that's been looking into Bob's story this entire time. You know, he's been trying to prove whether this story is true, whether, uh, you know, the claims that Bob's made are factual. Uh, he's been the one digging into his past this entire time, you know, trying to find his school records, trying to find where he worked, you know, being put up against brick walls against people who said, oh, yeah, he did work here, like at... Um, Los Alamos Nat uh, National Labs, uh, who uh, Bob worked for in 1982, who originally said, yes, yeah, he did work here. And then said, oh, no, he didn't work here. No, 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 no. There's no record of him being here at all. George obviously found the phone records and other things uh, connecting him there. He's found records linking Bob Lazar to the flights, the Janet flights that went out to um Area 51. There we go. <laughs> uh, that went out to Area 51. Uh, you know, so George is the one that's been piecing together all these bits of information for us regarding uh, Bob Lazar. So there you go then. Uh, that is what's the deal with George Knapp. I mean, you can make your own mind up about George. Uh, to me, he's a very serious journalist. He wouldn't have put his name to any of this if he didn't think it was real. Now, my next episode of What's the Deal With will be looking into Bob Lazar, so it'll be a full Bob Lazar video. I'm going to go into his interviews, into what George came back with, uh, you know, the polygraph tests, other things like that, that he passed but didn't pass. Um, and basically what they said was that he was relaying a story that he didn't... They couldn't necessarily say was real or false. Because what you do in a polygraph is you're testing for fear, basically. Uh, fear of being caught out of a lie. But in Bob's case, it could have been the fear of telling the truth. Which is why the polygraph tests were inconclusive. So what I'd like to know in the comments is what do you guys think of George Knapp? What do you guys think of Jeremy Corbell? Uh, what do you think of the weaponized podcast that they're doing? Um, personally, I, I really enjoy it. I, I love the work that they do. I love all the things that they bring forward. Um, I've always been a bit sceptical of the ATIP, ORSAP stuff, because it's still government. Then now you actually look into it and realise, well, Bob Bigelow funded this and then got £22 million worth of funding for ORSAP through uh, Senator Harry Reid, who's really into the UFO topic. But then when the programme didn't really yield anything and they wanted to cut the funding... It got publicised about ATIP, not ORSAP, being just for UFOs, so the Congress would be more interested in looking into these things. So where's, where does the web connect is what, is what I'm looking for. And if George is part of this, I mean, he's a millionaire. You know, he's got a lot to lose by any of this not being real. Because, like I said, no one's going to think incredible anymore, but he's got credible stories out there. Um, so is, is, is George being duped by some of these people? Um I don't know. I think George is a cleverer guy than that to, to be duped by them. But then again, when you get in deep with some of these people, you don't really know what their intentions are, especially when you're talking about millions and millions of dollars for funding. You don't want to go to prison for funding something that's, you know, just your folly, basically. You, you've got an idea of... It's like me turning around and you know, getting the UK government to fund this channel uh, and fly me all over the world and investigate UFOs. You know, if, if the British people found out you're just flying some random dude around the fucking country looking for weird stuff and putting them up in hotels or... You know, um, just going around ghost hunting and stuff, they'd go fucking mental, wouldn't they? 22 million quid to fucking send this kid round to look for fucking ghosts? Are you insane? You know, so... Is there a cover-up of a cover-up there? You know, um, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know what to believe anymore with this stuff. Um, which is why I've got to try and latch on to the fact that George Knapp is credible, is is the one to listen to. Um, so thank you very much for watching this little episode of What to Deal With. 
like I said, the, the next one to deal with will be the full episode on Bob Lazar. His story, it'll have the images of the saucer that he claims to have worked on, um, the field propulsion system behind it. I'll look into that in more detail, give you my thoughts behind this whole thing. Um, but yeah, George is a great guy. He's a great journalist. He's uncovered loads of fucking stuff, not just the UFO stuff, but it is because of George Knapp, basically, that we know about Area 51 or S4 or any of this stuff in the public right now. So I would just like to say, once again, thank you very much, George. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure that um, you're going to continue to do great work for us on Weaponized and, um, you know, on KLS and, and bring other things forward as well for us. So once again, George Knapp, thank you very much for all your, all your hard work. Uh, like I say, go and check out Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, there's loads of videos out there. I'll, I'll be doing one myself. Uh, go and check out the interviews with John Lear, which are on YouTube as well. If you check out on the record with... Um, George Knapp, you'll find a load of interviews under there, including the Bill Cooper one as well, uh, which that guy is insane. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> You're nuts. So, uh, anyway, thank you very much. My next episode will be on the MOD and things I found out from there, and then I'll be looking at the Kalahari incident of 1989, where two UFOs were apparently shot down by the South African government. Things just keep getting fucking weirder, people, don't they? Until then, I'll see you later.